Well, good afternoon and welcome everybody uh, to another live iThemes training event. My name is Nathan Ingram. I'm the host here at iThemes training. And today I'm joined by Carmen Kendrick from the LearnDash team. Carmen is the product manager at LearnDash where she creates go-to marketing plans for new features and products. She's worked as a freelance marketing consultant as well before LearnDash, helping small business clients improve their website's uh, conversion rate. That sounds like fun. Welcome to iThemes training, Carmen. Glad you're with us today. Thank you so much. I'm actually going to stop my share because I have a video attached to this and I think I have to like enable video before I can share. So let me. All right. Well, we'll give that again. a we'll give that a try. Uh, so welcome, everybody. If you're just joining us, we're getting started here with Learn Dash 101 with Carmen Kendrick. Uh, we are getting a couple of technical things ironed out now. And if you haven't done so yet, download today's slides using the uh, information in the chat area. You can follow along with that uh, Google Drive link, the PDF of all of Carmen's slides. Uh, we also have the replay there and be up uh, with audio, video, all the things you see on your screen, the chat log, the transcript, about an hour after we wrap up today. And uh, while Carmen is working those things out, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, use the question, uh, the Q&A button to uh, ask questions today, not the chat. Uh, so please ask your questions in the Q&A area. You'll also see, if you keep that window open, you'll see others, uh, the questions of others as they're asked. And uh, you can use the thumbs up button to upvote questions that you'd like to have the answers to as well. And we'll take those questions uh, as we wrap up today in the order of their votes. So uh, how are we doing, Carmen? Um, I was gonna let you know that I can't share sound. Um, it's like grayed out and won't even let me check the box. Um, uh, okay. And yeah, I was trying to see if I could try that again, but not sure why it's not letting me select that box to share sound. I'm not sure either. Well, maybe we um, just press press on any of the slides. Okay, no problem. That worked. So yeah. again, we're talking about Learn Dash today. Carmen is with us. She's a product manager with Learn Dash, and she's here to talk through um, a Learn Dash 101. So tell us what we're going to cover here in the next hour, Carmen. Yeah, so we're going to be covering uh, Learn Dash. So I know that a lot of people here probably build courses for them. Sorry, build websites for themselves or build courses, build websites for others. Sorry, courses is like stuck on my mind. Uh, so this angle I'm coming from today is about building maybe a course for yourself, um, especially if you're a freelancer. I know how it is to be waiting for that next client and sometimes just to have maybe some passive income coming in. So uh, I'd like to get uh, the slides back on the screen. Alrighty, so just an introduction of myself again. Uh, my name is Carmen Kendrick and I'm the product marketing manager here at LearnDash. Um, I'm located in Atlanta, Georgia. And some of my um, hobbies are writing for my personal blog, trying new recipes and tinkering with WordPress. All right, so today's agenda, I have a few icebreakers just to get us all kind of like comfortable um, and ready for the information. And then the presentation itself and then some Q&A at the end. All right, so the icebreaker. So uh, it looks like we already covered where everyone's joining from, so we don't have to worry about that one. Uh, but I do have another one here. So if you have created a course or you're thinking about creating a course, um, if you could just share an emoji of what your course would be about or what it's about, and I will just try to uh, maybe guess maybe a couple of those. All right, so uh, Nathan has a rocket ship. Um, whatever it is, I'm thinking like maybe speeding something up, going a little bit faster. Um, so if anyone else wants to drop an emoji before I move on, just trying to guess uh, what your course may be about. Even if you haven't created it, what would you create a course about? Um, Beth looks like there is a person graduating. Um, so I'm thinking of something like with education itself, maybe uh, K through 12 or even college level. And then Ryan has a, um, I can't think of the name of that. It's not a beaker. Or whatever you call that thing. <laughs> so I'm thinking something science related. Um, so the people that I did uh, try to guess the emoji, you could just put what your course is about. I would love to see if I was kind of right or not. All right, so Beth is a WP Project Managers Academy. Okay, I was a little off. I was in the education realm, so <laughs> close enough, right? <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna cover are the essentials of building an online course. Um, so let me move this over a bit. So why create an online course? Um, there's a lot of you know, different reasons why you may want to uh, build an online course, but just a few good reasons is to give you your time back. Like I said, if you're a freelancer, um, then I know how it is to be working with, I mean, working with clients back to back. Uh, it can be a lot sometimes, maybe you need a break. Um, and so courses can give you your time back. 
Um, it can also help you build a product ladder. So it just depends on what you're offering as a service, but sometimes you have people that may can't afford your service or maybe they just need to kind of work up to it to kind of just see um, if the big high ticket thing you offer is even enough for them to um, you know, make an investment by using a course. And then you can also scale your business using courses. It gives you another revenue source in your business. Um, it's a good upsell or downsell. So again, so if you're offering a product or a service, you can upsell your course um, or you can even downsell it. Um, and then we also have, it, it's an asset that you can sell over again. All right, so let's look at the different types of courses you can create. So this isn't all the courses you can create, but just a few of the ones that kind of stuck out the most to me. Um, so you have a free introductory course. It's designed to give your learners a quick overview, um, which can lead them deeper into working with you. Um, so this can be a little quick mini course um, that gives value, gives a quick win, um, but it just kind of leaves the people or the people that sign up for the course wanting to even work with you even more. I think I skipped around. Oh, sorry. <laughs> move back. All right, so the next one we have is a membership course. So membership course, this kind of reminds me of uh, WP, I want to say, is it Geeks? But they changed it, or the membership guides, the membership guides, I think they're the membership geeks. So they're the perfect example of a membership course. So they have a membership, they have a community, and then they have courses with inside of that membership. So they are really good if you're looking into creating any type of membership or a um, membership or a course driven kind of platform for memberships. All right, so that may have been that slide in there two times. All right, so I'm gonna move along. So let's know before you create your course. All right, so you wanna identify who your learners are and their goals. Um, so in order to make sure that your course is effective, you wanna carefully identify who your learners are. Um, what are they trying to achieve? Some things that they may be struggling with, any of their challenges, and how will your course help them achieve their goals? So all of those things are good things to think about before you create your course. You don't wanna just jump in there because you actually wanna make sure your course is valuable and worth the money, especially if you plan on charging for it. All right, so the next one here is you wanna create a roadmap to the desired, um, to the desired outcome. Um, so your learners say they may not all be coming from the same starting point. I know sometimes we want to jump directly in the course material, but maybe that first maybe section of your course is kind of you're just giving them a quick background, a quick overview um, of what's to come. And then the next thing is that you kind of want to scaffold um, when it comes like create really building blocks into the next uh, phases of your course. So you may maybe want to start with a simple comp, sorry, a simple um, title and then go into something that's a little bit more complex over time as the course goes away. So all this is a part of creating the roadmap uh, for your course. All right, so now you wanna start putting the pieces together. Now you kind of have a, you know who your learners are or who, or the type of people that will be taking your course, you know the kind of roadmap you're putting together for it, but now you wanna see how is it coming together. So what is the medium? So there's different types of courses out there. You have email courses, you have courses inside of an LMS which is a learning management system. Um, and then you wanna also look at things are your talking points for your course, um, your sections built upon previous sections, and then how are you turning this back, tying everything back into your learner's goals. All right, so what you'll need to create an online course with WordPress. All right, so as many of you may know, you already know you may need WordPress and hosting. I'm not going to go through that. I'm sure you all kind of understand what that means. And then you also, if you want to build it on WordPress, then you're going to need a LMS plugin, which is short for a learning management system. All right, so I have a video here, but I am not sure if that sound is going to play. Um, I'm going to try it anyway. Um, if you can hear it, then you can put a one in the chat, and I'm going to try to make this full screen. And if anyone can, can you all hear no audio? Okay, that's what I thought. All righty, let's see if I can maybe stop the share and get that to be working again. So what I was gonna be showing you in this quick little video is how you can get started really easily by creating a course with LearnDash um, and then with our newest option, which is LearnDash Cloud. So let me see if we can uh, get this to start working again. Give me just a moment to try to figure this out for you all. If not, I'll just try to walk through it um, as best as I can um, from the video. All right, so I think my walk, my workaround for this is, um, let's see. 
Yeah, I see the setting, but for whatever reason, it's not letting me click on the audio. And so my temporary workaround is just going to kind of watch the video with you all and try to walk you through what's going on in the video, which, you know, bear with me. Uh, so we'll see how this works out. Now, it may not be great, but if you if you can get the video playing out of your speakers, maybe hold your mic up to the speakers. Uh, and I'm actually using like these little, uh, what do you call it? My little headphone oh, thing, yeah. so I don't have a direct mic to it. Gotcha. Um, all right, so this page that you're kind of seeing right now, it is uh, showing you the different options with LearnDash. This is LearnDash Cloud. So LearnDash Cloud, uh, let me actually pause this while I'm going through it. LearnDash Cloud gives you um, a fully hosted website, so you don't have to worry about hosting, you don't have to worry about templates, all that is included in LearnDash Cloud. Um, it is one of our newest offerings. Um, if you already have a WordPress website, uh, then you may want to just use the plug-in version. Um, however, I do know when you're creating websites and you already have maybe an existing website, Sometimes it's better to put your course on a subdomain versus trying to put everything on one website. So LearnDash Cloud can also be an alternative to that, even if you already have an existing WordPress site. Um, so these are some of the different features uh, that are included in LearnDash Cloud. Um, so it kind of just makes things really, really simple for you. You don't have to really do a lot. You just kind of put your course content in. So this is a checkout process. So LearnDash Cloud is about $29 per month. Um, and this is after you purchase LearnDash Cloud, you're taking over to the account area and uh, you'll click on click here to log in when your site is ready to start uh, building your new courses with LearnDash Cloud. So this is kind of working better than I thought. All right, so this is the onboarding wizard for LearnDash Cloud. We'll just go through those steps. All right, click on getting started. All right, so here you have a temporary domain name. Um, so you can change this domain name at any point. Uh, we're hoping in the future where you can set your own temporary domain name. Some of these uh, names that come through are very uh, wacky, like Heavenly Office. Uh, good thing is that you don't have to keep it. And it is a great kind of like a staging maybe domain before uh, you add your, um, your actual domain to it. Uh, you're also going to go ahead and create your username and password um, for you to log into your um, LearnDash cloud website. All right, so just go on to the next step here. I'm trying to speed it up for you all. Okay, so um, the next step we have is adding the site name. So Generally, you would do this inside of the WordPress settings, but the onboard with it, onboarding wizard kind of makes it a little bit easier for you for you to kind of put that site name, tagline, and go ahead and add your logo to, um, to your LearnDash Cloud website. All right, so this next page is going to ask about different courses you want to create. Um, so the purpose of this is to add any plugins that you may need. Um, so the certificate builder is a free add-on. So if you do plan to um, have any or issue certificates for your courses, you can click certificate and it'll automatically put or add on that um, the free certificate builder add-on. Um, and then you also have uh, multiple courses where you can click just one or multiple here. So it's just asking what kind of courses you want to create. Uh, just also keep in mind, whatever you put here, you're not stuck to it. <laughs> Once you actually get inside of the, the website, you can always change this around or add any of the add-ons that you didn't uh, request before. All right, so next question here is, do you want to charge for your courses, which is probably a yes. Um, and then we'll go into how you want to set payments for your courses. So LearnDash actually has three built-in payment gateways. There's Stripe, um, there's PayPal, and then there's RazorPay, which is popular in India. You can also do WooCommerce, which integrates with LearnDash, and it gives you um, way more payment gateway options. Um, so there's just a different, few different ones you can get started with. And then at the very bottom here, you'll see your uh, currency code. This kind of throws people off. The currency code is just like for the United States dollar. You just put um, USD. Um, I think the Canadian dollars like CAD. So that's what you put where it says currency code here. You don't have to go to that ISO list. Just put in that three character code for whatever country you're accepting payments in. 
All right, so this is kind of like a confirmation page that just shows what's going to happen. Um, so it's going to automatically create a registration in the success page. And then it's also going to go ahead and uh, create the WooCommerce uh, plugin. Um, you can also select if you want to add Course Grid or the Certificate Builder. Um, you only need Certificate Builder or if you are going to be issuing any certificates for your courses. And then you also have the Course Grid. So if you have multiple courses, you probably do want to use the Course Grid. If you only have one course, um, then it really doesn't make a, a lot of sense to use Course Grid. So, but those are optional. You can always add those on later too. All righty, so let's keep pushing along. All right, so this next screen takes you into WooCommerce. We're just going to skip over this. You can always put the information is for WooCommerce, and this only comes up if you choose WooCommerce as your payment gateway. All right, so now we're going to move through some more of the setup. So here you have set up your site. We've already completed that. And then design your site. This is where we add our templates um, and choose our fonts and our colors for the website. So it's going over to design your site. All right, so I want to point out here, so Learn Dash Cloud does come with a few different templates to get you started. It comes with some of the Azure course templates and the Cadence theme templates. So you all may be familiar with Cadence. So all of those templates are included in Learn Dash. You do not have to purchase those separately. Um, and this is for Learn Dash Cloud. I should make sure I specify that. Uh, so you can choose any one of these templates um, or you can, you know, use your own theme. It just makes for you to get started a little bit easier if you don't um, have an idea for your theme or template you want to use. So I'm going to use this template here. Um, we'll just see what that looks like. It's pretty robust, like the way that looks. And we're going to select that. All right, so now we can choose the different fonts. Um, what I like about this is sometimes choosing fonts as like a non-designer can be very, it can be a lot. And so this kind of just gives you some fun ideas that already look great together. So you don't have to really think about that part of it. If you do want to use custom fonts, that is definitely up to you. But this just makes it easier so you don't think about design and you can just think about your course. All right, so now you can just choose different color palettes. Um, you don't have to use these color palettes either. It's just a great way to uh, think about the design piece and just use colors that already work. So now I'm just trying to decide which one I want to use. I was having a hard time deciding which one I wanted to use apparently. All right, so now it just shows, um, I believe this is the preview of what it looks like, and then you'll hit save and continue um, for it to put everything together for you. All right, so this is just showing you what it looks like live on the website. And that is the first part of just getting started with Learn Dash Cloud. The next piece is just showing you how to put your courses inside of Learn Dash. And that part is pretty quick as well. So let me just go to the next slide. And I'm gonna make this full screen so everyone can see it. All right, so now you probably are familiar with the uh, WordPress dashboard. So you'll hit the Learn Dash LMS over in the sidebar and go over to courses, and that's where we'll add our, um, our new course. Right. So you also have a Learn Dash Bootcamp. So if you're not familiar with Learn Dash, you can go to the Bootcamp, which is directly inside of your site now, before you start building your courses out. So if you've used a Learn Dash uh, plugin, it's very similar to Learn Dash Cloud. Uh, nothing really changes except for a lot of things are kind of done for you. So here we're adding our first course. Um, of course, you would add your course title and any overview content you may want to add to your course. Let's see, I think I named this how to build a WordPress website. And then here you can add your overview content. Uh, next, we have the builder. And this is where you I like to say you're creating, creating the outline of your course. Um, so you add your sections, which allow you to just organize the lessons within your course. All right, so these are all of the different lessons 
and sections I'm putting here. So I'm saving this as a draft and then I'm gonna go over um, to the settings, I believe next is to show you the different things you can do in your settings. All right, so here we have access mode. So access mode is pretty interesting. It's how you wanna offer your courses. Um, so open mode is your course, it's free and anyone can click into your course and take a look at it. It's not protected by registration. Um, sometimes it's a good use case. Um, there's a company called Schedulicity. They use uh, LearnDash for their, for their, I guess their training platform for their customers. So um, it makes sense that their customers don't have to log in to access the training to learn how to use the software. So they just make that easy. Um, so that's a great use case for open courses. Uh, you have free courses, exactly what it sounds like, except that your users will need to register for the course. Um, there's one-time purchases with buy now. So you set a price for your course. Um, you can do recurring access mode, which gives you subscriptions. Uh, subscriptions can be daily, weekly, monthly, or annual. I'm not sure who's signing up for a daily uh, subscription course, but it may make sense. Maybe it's a dollar a day. Um, and then you have closed courses. So if you're using any type of membership integration, um, for example, MemberPress, if someone buys a membership, then it, they can get automatic access to your course. Or if you just want to uh, manually enroll your, uh, your learners into a course, you can also use closed courses. All right, so a few more uh, here. I don't want to go too far. Let me go back a step. Sorry about that. I kind of lost my place. I was going to go through the rest of the settings, but if I can't find it, I'll just keep uh, moving forward here. All right, almost there. Sorry about that. All right, so right here, the other options you have for your settings, you have course prerequisites. Uh, so this is more, I think, so in the education space, um, if, if, but if you're a freelancer, I can't imagine you would probably have too many courses that you require someone to take before they take your main course. That could be an option, but that's up to you. Um, you also have course points, which is a way to gamify the course experience. So you can require a, number, a certain number of points before someone can take your course, or you can award them points afterwards. And then you also have a course access expiration date, uh, which just allows you to um, set a date that you want the access to the course expires. So maybe after, I don't know, 90 days, maybe you want to um, remove users from the course itself. All right, so um, one of the last things we have here is the different progression modes. So you can have your learners go through the course um, step-by-step, -step, meaning lessons one through five, or they can do free form, um, however they wanna move throughout your courses. All right, so I think one of the last pieces here is just how to add your content. So when you come back over to the builder and, and if you hover over this purchase or domain name, you'll see an edit button that shows up over here. Um, and then you can click on edit to add some content to your courses. Alrighty, so here is the lesson content page. Um, purchase a domain name is the title of this lesson. And then by clicking on the, um, the block menu, you can add different blocks. Um, most courses are probably going to use some type of video content, um, and if you can embed a YouTube video, Vimeo, or uh, if it's a Loom video, which is not an option, you can just do a custom HTML embed um, for a Loom video. All right, then we have a few different settings here. So for each one of your lessons, you can add different materials. So if you have maybe a worksheet or a PDF that's specific to this lesson, uh, you can add that here. Uh, you also have video progression. So maybe you want your learners to watch the video in full before they move on to the next steps. I hate that sometimes, uh, but you can also enable that. Um, if there are any uploads, so maybe you want to do assignments and have your learners upload those assignments uh, to that lesson, um, that's a possibility. And then you also have forced lesson timer, which just means that learners have to stay on that lesson for whatever time. So maybe it's 20 minutes. I want my learners to be on this lesson before they can move forward. And you can do that with the force lesson timer. All right, so, um, so something else I didn't cover in the, well, that's the lessons, I'm sorry. So you also have drip content. Um, so maybe you don't want your learners to have immediate access to lessons and quizzes. So you can do drip content. So you can do enrollment based, meaning that you can put a number of days. So if I sign up for your course today, maybe I don't get access to this lesson until seven days later. Or you can do a specific date, which is probably good for more cohort style courses. All 
All right, so that is that. Let me see if there's anything else left here. All right, so I think that is the end of just how to add a course. I just wanted this to be very simple. Uh, let me just go back into the slideshow. So now it is time for a and a All right, congratulations pressing on through that technical challenge, Carmen. That was really a great demo um, walking through that video. I have added the link to the, the, K, uh, the Learn Dash Cloud video in the chat. It's also, if you're watching this on the replay, it's linked in the webinar description down below the replay video. So you can uh, go check that out if you'd like to. Uh, let me also just back up a step and let's talk a little bit about Learn Dash Cloud because uh, Learn it, it's a it's a cloud service, right? So it's mm -hmm. it's a hosted learning management system, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's actually that's, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's actually using the Cadence theme uh, as the the theme that's uh, behind all the things, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. There are some Azure templates in there, but of course we want you to use Cadence instead. <laughs> But yeah, you do have the option. Yeah, very good. So uh, what, why, what, so where does the cloud, and this is sort of what's one of the questions actually, um, that uh, it, it's behind some of the questions that Ben is asking here in the Q&A. And so the move to, to have a hosted uh, course management platform, how does that help folks that are, are building courses? Yeah, so um, I kind of talked about this earlier. So if you're if you already have an existing website, uh, then it, it kind of gets tricky when you start putting different plugins together. Um, LearnDash is pretty stable, I will say that, but you, it still can cause issues with other plugins. So it's kind of recommended to maybe put your course website on a subdomain. And so instead of having to, I don't want to say LearnDash is expensive, but if you already have a website, then you may not want to invest in like another hosting plan, uh, buying the plugin and all everything else that goes into it. And then also try to change your site around to make that look how it needs to. And so LearnDash Cloud kind of opens that door for people that are already using WordPress. Um, it also opens the door for people that may be looking at SaaS solutions like Thinkific or Teachable um, and also help them come over to WordPress. Um, I know that we're kind of like stagnant with WordPress growing. I think we're kind of stuck around the 43, 44%. And so hopefully a move like this is also just encouraging people from those other platforms like, hey, you can put it all together, but it's also flexible. You're not limited to just using certain plugins. Um, you can still extend it if you want to do any custom development into it. So it's no restrictions on it at all. Yeah, it's very interesting. And so this this sort of factors into some of the discussions we've had around iThemes training over the last couple of years on, it pops up in different areas, but uh, whenever you are um, rebuilding for it, like let's say you have a, a course site and it's on your main.com business site, and but you also have something like LearnDash and you want to rebuild your existing site. Well, now you've got a little bit of a problem because, mm -hmm. you know, let's say you you fork that site to start rebuilding well, your users are still here on the live site interacting with your course and completing courses and doing quizzes. And if you push that development site back to live, your users have lost all that progress, right? Um, and so having a cloud solution like this is really smart, I think. I've, I've been recommending for a long time that if you have like a course site to make that a subdomain, or in this case, like a hosted solution uh, so that you can rebuild your main site without any kind of problems. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't even think about that use case when you redesign a website because that can be uh, a nightmare. So <laughs> it, there is not a great solution for a, a transactional site like a course site uh, to, and, and, you know, rebuilding it and, and factoring and all those things. So a lot of great questions here. If you have a question you'd like to ask, pop open the Q&A icon there in Zoom. Uh, take a look at the questions that have already been asked. Push the thumbs up uh, icon if you'd like to see an answer to that. And uh, we'll start taking some questions now. So. Uh, Manu has the first question. Uh, you showed a couple of different payment um, provider options in uh, specifically that was the LearnDash cloud. Uh, Manu would like to specifically know about PayPal or he says tr direct transfer to a bank, which I think is like ACH. Yeah, so PayPal is one of the built in um, payment gateways with LearnDash. If you wanted to do ACH, I would recommend uh, using the WooCommerce integration. Uh, we have a free add on for WooCommerce. 
uh, WooCommerce just allows you to do so many different things. I think I may have talked about getting my webinars mixed up because I just came off of one. Uh, but for example, um, if you're familiar with like the pay in for like the Klarna's and Afterpays, so WooCommerce would allow you to do something like that, especially if you have a high ticket course. And I definitely recommend high ticket courses for everyone. Um, you can definitely do it, but it, it just uh, makes a way for your learners to be able to afford your course a little bit easier. But WooCommerce does allow you to extend um, the different type of payment gateways you offer and even do ACH. Yeah, exactly. And and just to, to circle back around to that, you know, so the, the, the LearnDash e-commerce system is fairly simple. It's just going to check you out with a course. Um, and there's a, a few, uh, few payment gateways that are available, basically the popular ones that we'd probably look at anyway. But yeah. yeah, by adding WooCommerce, you can do things like Melanie just mentioned Affirm, which is another payment type, uh, you know, make payments towards it, where you as the, as the course site owner get paid immediately, and then they, you know, they can pay back in, in portion to uh, this other company like Affirm or those that you like Klarna, those that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, so having that WooCommerce integration is super helpful. Um, ben is asking, who is LearnDash targeting with the LearnDash Cloud subscription service? Yeah, so we're targeting, when we first thought about this, um, that was our hardest question because people that already have WordPress sites, like, hey, why would I want to do this? Um, so I think a big, a bigger part is trying to get more of the, I guess not so WordPress community, but trying to get out of the WordPress community and start maybe converting people from these other platforms um, to come over. And then another issue we always see is that people, because LearnDash was never like really marketed as just a WordPress plugin. So you would have people that will buy LearnDash and had no idea that they needed WordPress to make it work. Right. Um, and so that kind of eliminates that problem that you would uh, come across sometimes, especially by us not saying, hey, this is exclusively a WordPress product, because sometimes people think of WordPress as not being secure, which we know that is not the case at all. Um, but it just gives people different options and they don't have to kind of worry about that extra, you know, maintenance piece that comes along with WordPress. Yeah, sure. Um, and it's interesting. So this, it, it's actual LearnDash. It's not some scaled back version of LearnDash that's mm -hmm. in the cloud. So for example, you could build your course out there. And if later you decide to self-host it, you can just export that content. Is that right? Yes, um, that's a re really great point you bring up. Um, right after we launched LearnDash Cloud, we dropped the import export feature, which a lot of people have been asking for for a very long time. And so that is possible. But even uh, with us, we have a demo site. So if you ever want to try LearnDash before you purchase it, uh, you can go over to demo.learndash.com. But the demo site is available to you for seven days. You're like in a WordPress sandbox and you may start actually building your course. So what happens with import export, you can export your progress. And when you buy LearnDash Cloud or the plugin, just import it and just keep going from where you left off at. So a lot of possibilities to import export. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and so Ben, uh, another follow-up question from Ben here. Uh, does LearnDash Cloud integrate with all the current integrations of the LearnDash plugin? Yes, it does. So it's not lacking. Like it's literally just, um, we just stuck hosting and LearnDash plugin together and just like that. So nothing's lacking. You get all the same features. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's a WordPress install. It's got the cadence theme. It's got the LearnDash plugin. It's mm -hmm. just like you could spin up on your own, but LearnDash takes care of all of the, the security and plugin updates and all that stuff, right? Yep. That's great. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Is the class is LearnDash Cloud going to replace the plugin in the future? No, it is not. No, it's not. It's just a right now we're just testing it out to see how it goes, but there's no um, no plans to get rid of the plugin for cloud at all. Yeah, very good. Uh, folks, we're down to the last couple of questions. If you've got questions you'd like to ask, drop them in that QA window. Anything about LearnDash at all? You've got the expert here. Uh, so if you have a question, comment to uh, get over to Carmen, use the QA feature. Uh, Manu would like to know if there is a trial of some sort, and you just mentioned that demo site. Maybe talk about that once again. Yeah, so there's kind of two ways to kind of go about this. So we don't have a like a 30 day free trial. We do have a 15 day trial period. So I don't want to really call it a trial, but if you buy LearnDash, you have a 15 day money back guarantee. So at any point within those 15 days, you don't like LearnDash, you can always say, hey, I don't like it, and you get a full refund. Um, but we do also have the demo site. So if you go to demo.learndash.com, then you can spin up a demo site. It's available to you for seven days. And you can spin up as many demo sites as you want. 
Um, and then with the import export, you can easily export a demo site and import it into your next seven day demo site. Now we don't want you to build your whole course on it because I mean, you really can't, <laughs> but it is a great way to test it out before you actually, uh, before you go through and buy the software, but even after you saw those 15 days um, for you to try it out. Yeah, very good. And that link is just in the chat now, demo.learn-.com. And uh, just, you've, you've probably experienced one of these sites where you can spin up a demo of WordPress and and take a look. And that's exactly what that link does at demo.learn-.com. I'm looking at it and it lets you uh, see Learn Dash from a learner's perspective. I guess there's an existing mm -hmm. course there where you can interact with that and see what it feels like as a user. And then also from the administrator side. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Joe would like to know if there, if can you add other plugins to Learn Dash Cloud, like for example, Fluent CRM or uh, other various Learn Dash add-on plugins. Yes. Yeah, so you, it's not limited. You can add whatever plugins you want to it. Um, so it's totally up to you. You can still do custom development, um, whatever you like. It's still available in Learn Dash Cloud. Yeah. Very good. Let's see. Uh, Manu is asking if there are any tutorials on YouTube for all of these things. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're actually going through the process of updating our YouTube because we have like a lot of tutorials from like 2017 and we've done so much to the product since then. Um, so there are a lot, a lot of ones on our YouTube channel and just about every week we're dropping new tutorials on LearnDash. Um, we also have our Learn Dash Live webinars. Um, so they're pretty much a, just a walkthrough, a little bit more in detail than what I did just now. And you can also just see how Learn Dash works there too. Yeah, very good. And the link to the uh, YouTube channel for Learn Dash is there in the chat room. If you'd like to follow those out, there's really a lot of videos there uh, to take a look at. Uh, let's see. Andrew would like to know: Is do you have a list somewhere of WordPress plugins that might migrate um, into? Well, let's see, Andrew. Now I'm confused about the question. Let's see, a list of other WordPress LMS plugins that might migrate into Learn Dash. So, can you migrate, for example, from Lifter LMS into Learn Dash? Uh, well, that's something that we're considering in the future. The biggest issue with that is if um, Lifter LMS, if they would have like an export my course content feature, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's the biggest thing, excuse me so much. Um, so we also looked at SaaS plugins too. Um, but the thing with SaaS is like, they would have to be able to export your course content. Um, that's something that we want to integrate, but it does depend on other platforms if they allow you to export your content. Yeah, and so just, on a lot of these things, most course plugins, if they're coded the WordPress way, uh, like Lifter, for example, they're using custom post types. So you could use something like post type switcher, uh, Andrew, and just flip them into a Learn Dash course. Uh, you'd have to go in and deal with some of the settings, but it, that way you wouldn't have to recreate all the course lessons. That part would go pretty quickly. It's really yeah. setting up more of the, the course settings it, themselves uh, that would take a little extra work. Does that make sense, Andrew? Hopefully, if not, just ask a follow-up question. Great question. Uh, Stacy would like to know if Learn Dash, does Learn Dash Cloud take care of the backups, WordPress updates, et cetera? She said, I'm thinking that might be a draw for those who aren't already heavily invested in self-hosted WordPress. Yes, so we do handle the backups and the updates for your, um, for your WordPress site. Yeah, so all of that is taken care of. Um, do you... Do you know where the hosting is set up for that, Carmen? It's, it's, it's probably some liquid, a liquid web product, I would imagine. Yeah, it's a liquid web. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, this is a, a really great example. So for those of you that are part of our Our Themes training audience, uh, we're, I've, I've recognized most of the names in the attendee list. You know, we've been saying for a long time how you're going to start seeing brands coming together uh, under the Stellar uh, branding. And this is a great example of that where the cadence theme and the learn dash plugin and some liquid web hosting come together to create this great new product of a learn dash cloud and it's you know all the pieces of this are really good so i'm excited about it yeah it was also a good move uh justin who's the founder i'm um, just in uh, very many founder of learn dash um that's something that he wanted to do for a very long time by just being able to have that infrastructure because it took a lot of great minds um to put uh learn dash cloud together so yeah, for sure. All right, folks, uh, any last follow up questions for Carmen as we're starting to wrap things up? Carmen, is, uh, as we're starting to end, any, any final thoughts for folks? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, other than just the webinars, if you want to see more of a more detailed walkthrough of how um, the Learn Dash, how it works and different par parts of it, 
uh, then I want to invite you. I think that it's on the uh, that PDF handout. Uh, Nathan, did you um, put that in there or just add the yes. link to that? Okay. I'm going to paste once again the link to the slides and the replay. And if you're watching this on the replay, there's a download handout button below the video where you can download the slides. Okay, awesome. So that's where you can find the link to join our next um, Learn Nash live walkthrough um, that happens every Tuesday at the same time. I lead that with one of our great people from support because sometimes I don't always know the answers, but our support uh, people, they're awesome. And so they always have answers to help you all out. Okay, so that actually, that's interesting. So the Learn Dash Live is uh, almost like an open ask me anything kind of a situation. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. those of you that are training members, it's like office hours uh, that we do every Thursday, but for the Learn Dash team. So if you're already a Learn Dash user and you didn't know about that, you just got a gold nugget <laughs> because you can show up yeah. and ask questions directly to the tech team. That's pretty cool, Carmen. Yeah, it is. It is. And we're hoping to expand it even more, um, maybe even do like live build together sessions, but just some ideas um, for the future. Okay. Beth says, say it again. So <laughs> Beth was not paying attention. So uh, we love Beth here. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> give us the details again about that session. Yeah. So it happens every Tuesday. At, it's at 1 15 uh, Eastern time. We do recordings of it. So if you sign up and you can't make it, um, and you do get that recording within 24 hours. And we just cover a lot of the features on how to build courses in Learn Dash. And then you can also ask questions throughout. Um, it's usually myself and a support person there. And so the questions that I can't answer, they definitely can because they deal with it on a day to day basis. Very good. And Carmen, I now see the PDF you're talking about here. So uh, this is a different, this is not in the slide PDF, folks. So what I'm going to do. Just as soon as we wrap up here, I'm going to add this link uh, to the slides. So we'll have that done. And let's see, let's learn dash live. Here's the link that Carmen is referencing. It is now in the chat. Uh, learn dash. Yeah, there's Sorry, quite folks. a few different links on there. So yeah, so there's a, there's a link doc that we don't currently have uh, available for you. But I'm going to get that to you. I'll have the slides updated with this last page of the PDF. Uh, after we wrap up here. So give me five minutes, folks, and retry the chat link, and you'll be able to download the set of slides that includes the PDF that I just dropped in uh, to the chat. So um, yeah, once again, join them for that Learn Dash Live. That's a great thing. Uh, today's slides are there in the chat, and the replay will be up in about an hour after we wrap up today. Um, you'll be able to rewatch and go through anything you'd like. So Carmen, thanks very much for being with us. Great questions today Thank from everybody throughout. Me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up for us today on iThemes Training. We're back tomorrow at one o'clock with Amanda Gorman from the GiveWP team talking about uh, preparing your nonprofit website for the giving season. Uh, so a lot of good stuff there. If you serve nonprofits, you will not want to miss that. So we're done for today, but see you back here tomorrow on iThemes Training, where we go further together.